This week has been massive for Mistral AI. They not only released two models earlier this week meant for code completion and math, which were absolutely incredible for their size, but today they announced something even more interesting. And it's not another model based on Mamba 2, diverging from their previous uh, transformer-based architectures, but it's another base model called Nemo that Mistral has been working on with NVIDIA. And there's some really interesting attributes of this model I want to unpack, both from the perspective of new things Mistral is doing and how NVIDIA is further tightening its grip on just anything that matters when it comes to state-of-the-art open source LLMs and where people can run them. So welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So what's really interesting about this model is it's one of the first that technically Mistral and NVIDIA are calling a enterprise grade ready model which of course there have been multilingual models that Mistral AI has released in the past. We've seen incredibly powerful coding models. And Nemo is basically the next evolution of a base model coming from Mistral. What's interesting is it's already kind of tuned with instruct contexts, which is a very popular thing that has been basically a new standard since the latest version of DeepSeq Coder was released. And what's cool is it's not a massive model, so it's just a 12 billion parameter model, its context window is quite large at 128,000 tokens. And the cool thing about this is all this runs at FP8 precision out of the box. So to get the full capability, you don't really need um, a lot of really, really expensive GPUs that are hard to find right now. Mistral has a great page on their website going over this, but frankly, I actually like the NVIDIA blog release a bit more because it goes just a little bit deeper. And after I get into some of the more interesting attributes of this model under the hood, we're gonna do a demo as well. So clearly NVIDIA has realized that some of the best AI work being done out of the EU is happening at Mistral. And they've now partnered with Mistral to produce this incredible Nemo model. And if anything, we're only going to see even more advancements coming out of this because it's a base model and the entire point is to build new models on top of it. And uh, I can say I firmly disagree with people who say that the age and the time of fine tuning is over. I don't think they're even close. I think there's still so much more work we can do in terms of efficiency and really getting the most out of these models at even smaller sizes. So basically they say today, Mistral AI and NVIDIA released a new state-of-the-art language model called Mistral Nemo 12B. So obviously it's a 12 billion parameter model. And they claim here that it's meant to customize and deploy for enterprise applications supporting chatbots, uh, multilingual tasks, coding, and summarization. And one of the first internships I had in college was working on chatbots. So it's actually kind of cool to see that this tooling is just so superfluous and available to everyone now. They say here that by combining Mistral AI's expertise in training data with NVIDIA optimized hardware and software ecosystem, the Mistral Nemo model offers high performance for diverse applications. And I should say this is one of the faster iterations we've seen from Mistral. And it's also cool that Mistral is now clearly entirely bought into NVIDIA's hardware. And this is one of the first models I think that we've seen, at least from NVIDIA, be entirely trained on DGX hardware. And we'll get into exactly what was used at the end of their announcement here. The benchmarks for this model are also pretty incredible, especially since all of this is happening at FP8 precision without basically any performance loss. So this model is compared to Gemma 2 9 billion and Llama 3 8 billion. So both of these models have been taken down in size quite a bit compared to their original base models. And the first thing that really stands out here is how massive the context window is for this model relative to other models of this size. So Gemma 2 and Llama 3 at their perspective sizes only have an 8,000 token context window. And Mistral Nemo is still considerably more performant than these models, basically across the board in basically everything except MMLU. So obviously you're not going to be completely obliterating Llama 370B with this model, but this is something that most people can use, most people can fit on their GPUs, and that really even more people can actually instruction fine tune again with even less compute. And seeing all of this coupled with multilingual capability is also really, really cool to see. This comes from a number of areas, but one of the bigger areas this comes from, and one of the things that a lot of small models actually struggle with is the compute required for their tokenizer. And it's where their size constraints start to limit their capability. Mistral Nemo actually uses a new tokenizer called Tekken, which is based on Tick Token, which was the previous state of the art. And this was trained on over 100 languages and compresses natural language text and source code more efficiently, which makes it more useful for a number of things and even more useful for, for languages that actually even use entirely different character sets like South Korean or Chinese. And clearly instruction fine tuning was a massive focus here because Mistral Nemo underwent an advanced fine tuning and alignment phase 
compared with Mistral 7B, which makes it much better at following precise instructions, reasoning, and again, multi-turn conversations. And this also helps with generated code. So whether or not it's better than their new Codestral Bomba 2 model, it's we'll have to wait and see. But what's interesting is it clearly wildly outperforms in MT Bench and Wild Bench when compared again to Mistral 7B and Llama 3 8B. And I think this is why Mistral is calling this more of an enterprise ready model because it's not going to veer too far off the path you give it. And it will always try to do something kind of procedural. So again, Mistral Demon was trained on the NVIDIA DGX Cloud AI platform, which NVIDIA, again, wants to show is the most scalable, especially for transformer-based models. This also is compatible out of the box with Tensor RT LLM, which is an NVIDIA platform that lets you accelerate inference with uh, any models that have been built with it, both when it comes to fine tuning and doing a lot of things. And it speaks more broadly to the idea that NVIDIA wants to create kind of the best ecosystem for people who are building models, not just people who are trying to build data centers and large LLMs alike. Now, what they claim this is best at, and we're gonna try this out in just a bit, uh, are multi-turn conversations, which we know are pretty hard and still confuse a lot of uh, open AI tools, uh, math, common sense reasoning, world knowledge, and coding. And again, they call it an enterprise grade AI model, probably because of its precision and reliable performance when you're using it. We already talked about the very sizable context window, especially for a model of this size. It's released under Apache 2.0, which means you can pretty much use it for whatever you want, just as long as you give Mistral a little bit of credit where it's due. And what's really cool here, I think, is that you're getting all of these benefits that they're claiming at um, FP8 precision, which NVIDIA just completely nails here by saying uh, reduces memory size and speeds deployment without any degradation to accuracy. So in general terms, this has been sort of pre-fine tuned and it's cool that it's meant to work at a more realistic precision that you can use with more consumer, that you can use with more GPUs that are more available to consumers. And it also comes as a NVIDIA M inference microservice, which we're actually going to use um, to showcase this. I'm not gonna, I won't be using a hugging face. And again, the idea of this is that it's making it much easier for lots of people to use, not just people who have lots of cloud credits from Amazon or Hugging Face um, or any company like that. And I think the idea here is NVIDIA is really aiming to say, yeah, like you don't have to do all of your own work to create a base model. You can use this. It's licensed properly to use within our system. So you just don't have to worry about it. And we offer a lot of different options to run this on. And what's cool is they say clearly here again, it's designed to fit on the memory of a single NVIDIA L40S, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 or RTX 4500 GPU. And if you guys want to see me run this on a 4090, uh, please let me know because Azeroc finally got my parts back from RMA and I'm going to be putting back my um, GPU system back together. And also I'm back from all of my startup travel. So I'm sorry over the last few weeks, I didn't have as much time as I would have liked to put up videos. Um, I'm going to do my best to not have that happen again. So what's cool is we do know, we, we don't know how long it took, but we know that this was trained with approximately 3000 H180 gig uh, Tensor Core GPUs on a DGX cloud all orchestrated with Megatron LM, which is a really integral part of NVIDIA's infrastructure that um, they really want to make in terms of being the best place to train transformer-based models. And what's cool is since they're still GPUs, you can also train Mamba-based models, which I really hope to see more of from Mistral AI in the near future, but that'll be in a different video. And again, we're hoping to see maybe an update to what NVIDIA thinks the ideal AI workstation is. Uh, they say here, the whole idea is to run anywhere on the cloud, data center, or RTX workstation. So I'll be making my own video about RTX workstations. It's in the works, and it'll be coming out probably sometime next week. So now I want to hop into the NVIDIA NIM interface, and let's see if we can actually get this to run. And I'm working with NVIDIA to maybe have some giveaways or something where I can give you guys some free credits to try this out, and let's see what we get here. So my question here is which NVIDIA GPU is best for running Mistral AI models locally? And wow, this is fast. Okay, so the, the basic idea here is to see how much a model that was trained with NVIDIA hardware in collaboration with NVIDIA knows about NVIDIA. So to run Mistral AI models locally, you'll want a GPU that supports the necessary hardware. So of course, NVIDIA. So it's recommending the 3080, the 3090, the A100, and the 4090. And it does make a differentiation between consumer and enterprise GPUs. And let's see here. Uh, so let me ask kind of a nuanced question. Uh, let's say I can only have two GPUs and use consumer 
motherboards, what kind of config would you recommend? What's the largest model I could run with this config? And to make it multi-step, I'll just say if possible, which a lot of times confuses these LLMs. Okay, so we're getting what appears to be modern hardware. So obviously the 3090 is pretty old at this point. So it's cool that this is actually still recommending a pretty modern platform. It understands the power requirements and a thousand watt power supply would basically do it. I mean, I, I think it would, it would have been better if they would have recommended like a 1600 watt. But what's cool is NVIDIA also knows that the RTX 3090 is the best deal for doing local AI. Now, for a, a twist here, I'm, I'm going to say uh, if I could have more than four GPUs, but could only afford GPUs less than 300 per unit. So I'm looking at people who have like 18 P40s in a rig. If you go on the uh, the Reddit local llama subreddit, uh, you'll you'll see a number of these. Would that be usable? What would I need to use to Distribute inference. And also, uh, if you guys like distributing inference in fun ways, uh, I am also making a video about a really cool new open source project that actually anyone can use right now that lets you um, run LLM inference on like basically any device. So mostly Macs and uh, GPU rigs, but also on iPhones. And you can like combine all of their hardware. So if you're interested in seeing that, please let me know in the comments below. Okay, so it missed a little bit what we were saying here. So I was hoping it would see that we wanted more than four GPUs, but it understands model and pipeline parallelism, which is the reason that would be difficult. So a bit of a miss there, but that is very nuanced knowledge and it's asking a lot of an LLM to get there. So for a more common question, I'm going to ask something about mangoes and we'll see if it understands this. So I'm going to say, I have a mango tree and I'd like to have three glasses of mangoes. What do I need to do to make this happen on a hot day? So I've made it uh, clearly kind of confusing for this LLM and we'll see what it gives us. Ideally, the answer here is I pick three mangoes, I get three glasses, I put them in the glasses, but if it thinks I want like a mango lassie, we'll see if it gets a little confused here. Okay, so it thinks I want juice, which is interesting. Okay, cool. So it tells us which ones to cut, how we need to prepare them, Healing, cutting them, um, blending them. Sorry, mangoes. And oh, it, it, it does kind of think we want a lassie. It says into a mango puree. Uh, so that's kind of funny. And okay, so what's interesting is this is very consistent. And what's cool is it's not too instruct heavy. There's some instruct models that will just entirely miss basic questions. Um, and now I'll, I'm going to try something here. So I'm, I'm going to say write an eight sentence pros based on the steps you just explained. Great. And this is also something that a lot of instruct models struggle with, which is going from a list of things to something that's more freeform or readable. And I think this is quite cool. Uh, and now just to show that it's multimodal, I'm going to say, uh, please translate this into South Korean. And wow, very cool. And I'd like to use these because um, a lot of times LLMs will have much more difficulty um, switching between different kinds of character sets. So I don't speak South Korean, but I might send this to a friend of mine and see if this is intelligible. But I really like this model so far. And frankly, I'm really liking the NVIDIA uh, NIM kind of interface here a lot. So um, yeah, definitely check out this really great NVIDIA interface. Uh, I found it to be much more useful and reliable than the Hugging Face Infra, um, which recently has just gotten kind of less uh, reliable. But yeah, so I'm curious, um, are you guys gonna start building on top of this new Mistral base model? Have you used their other code completion models? Um, I also have a video coming out about one of my favorite tools to do um, code completion with uh, open source models. Right now you can actually use um, Mistral's code completion for free, specifically their Mamba 2 based one, which is very, very good. And in another video, I'm going to get into why that is. But um, thanks for watching guys. As always, I hope you learned something in this video. I'm going to do my best to not have kind of like a week and a half block of not making videos again. And we'll see you in the next one.